IELTS Listening Model Test 3 You will hear a number of different recordings, and you'll have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1 on page 316. Section 1. You will hear a conversation between a lost and found agent and a woman who's lost something. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4 on page 316. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Is this the lost and found department? Yes, this is lost property. Did you lose something on the train? Yes, I did. I lost something very valuable, and it's very important that I get it back. All right, calm down. We'll fill out a lost item report form. Now, when did you lose the item? Just now. Today. A few minutes ago. Mm, today's Monday. Okay, right. The item was lost today, which is Monday. So Monday has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Is this the lost and found department? Yes, this is lost property. Did you lose something on the train? Yes, I did. I lost something very valuable, and it's very important that I get it back. All right, calm down. We'll fill out a lost item report form. Now, when did you lose the item? Just now. Today. A few minutes ago. Mm, today's Monday. Okay, right. Can't you hurry? Can't you send the police to look for it or something? Now, just relax. This will only take a minute. May I have your name, please? It's Patty. That's P-A-T-T-Y. Last name Brown. Like the colour. Patty Brown. All right, Miss Brown, your address? I live at 17 High Street. 70 or 17? 17. Is that a house or a flat? Oh, it's a flat. An apartment. Number five. And the city is Riverdale. Just one more thing. I need a phone number. 305-5938. Is that home or office or... It's my mobile phone. That's the best number to use because you can always reach me there. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10 on pages 316 and 317. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Okay, I'll need a description of the lost item. What exactly did you lose? I lost my reading glasses, but you know I bought them in Italy. They're Italian designer glasses and very expensive. I see. And can you describe them? Are they square or round? Or They're round. And they have a chain attached. You know those chains on glasses so you can hang them around your neck? Where were you when you last had them? 
I was sitting on the train, reading. I had a window seat. The train was just about to enter the station. I, I heard the door at the other end of the car open, so I looked up from the article I was reading to see what the noise was. So you had your glasses on then because you were reading? Yes, that's right. It was a fascinating article in that new magazine. You know the one. I can't remember the name now, but anyhow. Which train were you on? Oh, dear. I don't remember the number, but it was the train from Riverdale. I've come here to visit my aunt. I've taken a whole week off of work to make this trip. I left home at five o'clock this morning, and I'm very tired. I'm sorry to hear that. Several trains have arrived from Riverdale this morning. What time did your train get here? Oh, just about 30 minutes ago. At 10 o'clock, I think. Yes, that's right. So, the last time you had your glasses was when you were reading on the train. Yes. And when I got off the train, I had my handbag and my suitcase, and I checked my seat to see if I had left anything on it. But I hadn't. And what's that in your coat pocket? What's what? Oh, uh, oh, my glasses. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't believe they were there the whole time. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2 on page 318. Section 2. You will hear a recording of a talk about student housing. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14 on page 318. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning. Welcome to day two of Student Orientation Week. The subject of the first talk today will be off-campus housing. This is of interest to those of you who don't want to live in student housing and are not familiar with our city. I'll give you some tips about where to look for housing and how to go about it. Okay. First, let's talk about where to look for an apartment. There are some places that I don't recommend. The obvious place to look, you might think, would be in the neighborhood of the university. However, that's probably not a very good idea because, unfortunately, this is one of the more expensive areas of the city to live in. The downtown area is a popular place to visit. However, that's not a good place to look for housing either because it's mainly a commercial area. There are very few apartments there, it's also rather far from the university. So, where does that leave us? I can recommend a couple of good places to look. Many students rent apartments in the uptown neighborhoods. The prices there are quite low and many buses go there, so it's very easy to get to the university from there. The Greenfield Park neighborhood is also popular. It's closer to the university, but not many buses run in that direction, so you'll need a car if you choose to live there. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20 on page 318.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 15 to 20. All right, so let's say you've decided on a neighborhood. Next, you have to find out what apartments are available. There are a number of places where you can look for apartment ads. The best place to look is at the university student center. There is a wall there devoted to apartment ads. You can also look in the university newspaper. It comes out every Friday, which gives you the weekend for apartment hunting. The local city newspaper, the Greenfield Times, also lists apartment for rent ads. Again, Friday and Saturday are the best days. That's when you'll find the most ads. Finally, of course, you can look on the Internet. There are several Internet sites devoted to apartment rental ads in this area. The staff at the Student Counseling Center is always ready to help you in your apartment search. They have available city maps as well as city bus schedules to help you get around to the various neighborhoods. If you would like to find someone to share an apartment with you, the Counseling Center has a roommate matching service. Most students find that having roommates is the most economical way to rent an apartment. The center can also provide you with a list of inexpensive furniture stores. We all know how expensive it can be to furnish an apartment, but it can also be done in a more economical way. Also, you might want to consider signing up for a meal plan on campus. If you don't like to cook or are too busy, well, you still have to eat, right? If you live off campus, you can still eat in the university's student dining rooms. We have plans for buying meals by the week, month, or semester. The Student Counseling Center can give you all the necessary information on that. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3 on page 319. Section 3. You will hear two students talking about their assignment. First, you will have some time to look at questions 21 to 25 on page 319. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Have you decided what you're going to write your paper on? The one for Professor Anderson's class? The topic is transportation, right? I've been thinking about writing about bicycles as a way to solve our transportation problems. Really? I usually think of bicycling as a sport or recreational activity. Around here, that's what most people think. But in some parts of the world, bicycles are an important form of transportation for many people. I think we have a lot to learn from them. So, what are you going to say in your paper? I'm not sure. Maybe you can help me figure some of it out. Sure. OK, well, I'd say if you want to persuade people to use bicycles more often, you have to start by thinking about the advantages and disadvantages. You're right. Let's see. Well, I think the advantages are obvious. First, bicycling is good for your health. Yes, that's true. And another thing is that bicycles are a lot cheaper to use than cars. Or any other form of transportation when you think about it. You don't have to pay a fare every time you ride your bike, like you do when you take the bus or the train. OK. Another one is that bicycles don't cause pollution like cars and buses do. Yeah. That's a really important one. 
Bicycles are a clean form of transportation. OK. So what about the other side? What are some disadvantages, some reasons why people might not want to use bicycles? One thing I thought of is weather. Who wants to ride a bike in the rain? Or if you live where the weather is cold all winter, it would be hard to use a bicycle regularly. So bad weather would be a problem. Bad health would be too. Some people just aren't strong enough to ride bikes very much. You have to be in good shape. Yes, especially if you live far from your job or wherever you have to go. So that would be another problem, distance. It's difficult to ride your bike if your trip is a long distance. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30 on page 319. Now listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. OK, so using a bike might not work for everyone, but for a lot of people it would. How can people be encouraged to use bikes for transportation? I think there's a lot cities can do. I think the biggest thing is making bicycle lanes on roads. It's really dangerous riding a bike where there's a lot of traffic, so special lanes just for bicycles would make things a lot safer. That's a great idea. Yeah, they already do that in some cities. And another thing is to make safe places for people to leave their bikes. I mean, like at subway stations. A lot of people ride to the subway station and then take the subway to work. They need a safe place to lock up their bikes all day so they don't get stolen. That seems important. Yes. And another thing I've read about is maps. Some cities provide bicycling maps that show all the good routes. They show people how easy it is to get around by bike. OK. But what about equipment? Don't you need a lot of special stuff to ride a bicycle? I don't think so. For safety, you should wear a helmet, and at night you should have lights or wear reflective tape so cars can see you. For comfort, you need light clothes and waterproof clothes when it rains. But that's all I can think of. Really, it's easy and inexpensive to get started riding a bike. I think you'll write a great paper. You've already persuaded me to get a bike. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4 on page 320. Section 4. You'll hear a professor explaining an assignment to the class. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40 on page 320.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we'll talk about the most important assignment you'll do in this class, which is write a research paper. I'll start by going over the process step by step so you'll know exactly what I expect of you. All right, let's begin at the beginning. The first step is to choose a topic. I have a list of suggested topics related to the content of this class, and I'd like you to look over it to find a topic that interests you. Then, since they are somewhat general, I'd like you to narrow your topic choice down to something more specific. You'll need to get my final approval on your topic before you begin your research. The next thing you'll do is gather information on your topic. There are two major places to go for that. At the library, you'll have reference books and other types of books available, as well as journals, magazines, and newspapers. Don't forget to look at atlases and other similar sources, too. They contain a lot of useful information. Then, of course, there is the Internet where you'll find online journals and newspapers, as well as online encyclopedias, and much more. After you have gathered some information and had the chance to start thinking about your topic, the next step is to write a thesis statement. This is a critical part of the process because the bulk of the paper will be about using your information to defend your thesis statement. I will be happy to help you with this and actually with any other part of your writing process if you need it. Now then, let's say you have your thesis statement and you have your information. How do you get started writing? It can seem overwhelming with all your ideas and notes floating around. Writing an outline will help you to start getting focused. Make sure your outline includes three important things. First your introduction, where you state your thesis, then the body, which is the bulk of the paper and where you make the arguments to support your thesis, and finally, the conclusion. Here, you'll restate your thesis and summarize your arguments. So now that you have your outline, you can start organizing your notes. Organize them according to the outline. As you go along, you'll start seeing what information is important to emphasize, what information you may actually not want to include, what you need to find out more about, etc. So organizing your notes helps you understand your information better and start to analyze it. The next step is to write your first draft. If you have developed a good outline and organized your notes well, then this should not be too difficult. Following your outline, present your information and analysis of it. Then, of course, the next thing to do is revise your draft. Read it over carefully, checking to make sure that you have explained your ideas clearly and presented your information correctly. You may want to reorganize some of your information at this point, too. Finally, you'll type your final draft on the computer. Make sure that you check it for punctuation and spelling errors before you hand it in. Okay, that's a general outline of how to go about writing a research paper. Now let's talk about the proper format for footnotes and bibliographic entries. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet. Pause CD for 10 minutes. This is almost the end of the test. 
You now have one more minute to check all your answers. Pause CD for one minute. That is the end of the listening section of Model Test 3.